All right, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians in chapter number 2. As we continue our study, Philippians 2. We're going to be in verse uh, number 25 through the end of the chapter, verse 30. Philippians 2, verse 25. Once you find your place, I invite you to stand as we honor God with the reading of his word. Philippians 2, 25. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully that when ye see him again, ye may rejoice that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him, therefore, in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation, because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. Let's pray. Father, as we are to the teaching and preaching part of the service, Father, once again, I ask that you would empty me of myself. Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin and that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit that I may preach, thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, as we discuss Epaphroditus, Lord, I ask that you would help us to stay focused, that you would help us to stay engaged. Father, that we could glean from this, Lord, and see where we may be lacking, and we may apply what we hear this morning, this evening, to our life, Lord, and ask that you would have your will and your way, for it's in Christ's name I pray, amen. Thank you, you may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. An honorable servant, an honorable servant, last week we talked about, we talked Serve like Timothy, right? We talked about uh, how he was a servant, how Paul said he had no other man like him. Now, we talked about last week that maybe Paul wanted to send someone else uh, to the church at Philippi, but maybe uh, no one else wanted to go or had other things going on, but Timothy, uh, he went. Well, today we're talking about Epaphroditus, and he was a servant uh, uh, to Paul. He was uh, a church member that Philippi sent to, to help Paul. And Epaphroditus, uh, in re- relation to Paul, he, was, he calls him in verse 25 his brother. Uh, he is my brother and companion in labor and my fellow soldier, but your messenger. He was... Uh, and so he, he, he sent, Paul, Paul sent back a letter to Ephesus, uh, and so uh, he was his brother, his fellow soldier, worker, and uh, uh, his uh, Philippine, uh, Philippian church there, messenger and minister to Paul's need. And so we're going to discuss some things in verses 26 through 30 about Epaphroditus that I think we all can gain from and also look into the mirror of God's word in our own service to the Lord. Not only in our own service to the Lord, but to one another. First thing I want us to look here in in Philippians 2 is uh, Epaphroditus was committed to uh, the Philippians. Now we know that uh, where uh, Timothy, he was the same one. He was exactly the, the same. He was committed and was concerned about the church in Philippi. But uh, Epaphroditus, he had a little bit more commitment to the church because, 
you know, he, he was going back there, and he loved the church. Now, uh, as believers, we should love God's church, right? Now, I'm not just talking about our own, our own local church. I'm talking about uh, the church of Jesus. We should love the church, right? And, and that's if we read our Bible, right, the New Testament, I mean, all the servants that was uh, servants of the Lord that uh, went and did ministry, they, all, they loved the church of God. And as believers, uh, we should love the church. And so he, Epaphroditus, he loved the church, but he, he, it went beyond that for Epaphroditus. If you read these verses, it, showed he, it says he longed for the church. There's a difference between loving and longing for. Right? When you're longing for something, uh, listen, it, you, it's the attitude, I just can't wait. Right? You have that, that mentality, that attitude. I just can't wait. And so he loved and the church, and he longed not for just any old church, but the church of Philippi. He longed for that church. And listen, if we love Jesus, we love the church. Every single, listen, we may gripe and we may complain and we may critique other churches. Right? And we, we, let's be honest, we stab each other in the back. We do, there's not a single a church out there that we know of that we don't critique. When this church says, well, I wouldn't do it that way. We just critiqued them, right? Well, I can't believe that they sing that. They sung that song there, right? Well, we critique. But, but, but listen, we are to love that church. If that is a New Testament church founded, biblically founded, then we should love that church. Now, if it's not, than case in point, right? But listen, as believers, we should love the Jesus' church. But especially, if you're a, if a member of a local church, you should have more love for that local church than you do any other church. There's this thing called loyalty. See, Epaphroditus, he, he had that kind of loyalty. It says he longed for the church of Philippi. And so, yes, as believers, we shall love uh, Jesus' church, but especially love our own local church. Listen, we are not, to, listen, as believers, listen, if you want, I want to help you, we are not to play the church dating game. Now, I'm not saying, uh, I'm not saying not to find your spouse in the church. No, 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 no. You, 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 some people say, yeah, I love the church. That's why I go to one church Sunday morning. I'll go to another church next week. No, no, no. We don't play the church dating game. We don't just, listen, you know, back in the day, if, like in Baytown, if there were two Baptist churches and you left your ba the Baptist church you went to for some reason and went to the other, they wouldn't accept your membership. Why? Because you are to be loyal to your church. Believers today play the church dating game. They leave for whatever small, flippant thing that is brought up. Yeah. Hello. Welcome to God's Road Baptist Church. We don't, listen, uh, we're not to play the church dating game. There are biblical reasons to leave a church. And I emphasize Biblical. If it's heresy, but you always should take the approach that Jesus gave us. You go to that person. You don't just, well, that's heresy, we're gone. Well, it didn't automatically, it didn't just show up, right? So, listen, we, we, we don't play the church dating game. We're not to leave a church because of this, what, what happens is people will gather, they'll come to church, they'll get all excited. I love the preaching, I love the singing, I love this, and then when the new wears off and the old shines through, somewhere else. Church, we, we, call, we call them church hoppers. I mean, let me ask you this. Do you leave your wife because something she did something that you didn't like? Well, Brother Mark, we're not married to the church. Well, there should be the same kind of loyalty. 
did not Jesus give his life for that church? Hello? And so, no, no, no. If you wouldn't divorce your spouse just because they did something you didn't like, don't leave the church, your local church, because they did something you didn't like or you didn't approve of. You're not the standard, folks. I am not the standard. Jesus is the standard. So, see, Epaphroditus, he longed for the church at Philippi. That's what Paul says. And it says that he got sick, right? Epaphroditus loved the church as a whole, but he had that special place for Philippi. And Epaphroditus, he had this selfless love for the church at Philippi. It's, it, it says that he was distressed, that they were dis, been distressed, that he's been sick. He, and so Paul is talking in verse 26, he longed for you all and was full, uh, full of heaviness because that he, he had heard that he had been sick. And so, uh, see, evidently, Epaphroditus had gotten sick, but in ver if you go to verse 30, you see why. Evidently, when the, when the church at Philippi was sending up there to help minister, there were some things that Paul was in need of that the church at Philippi uh, didn't supply. And so what Epaphroditus, when he went and worked and tried to close the gap, between what Philip, the church of Philippi sent and what Paul needed. And it said he, he didn't even care for his own self, his own body. He got sick. And, and it says here in verse uh, 26 that when Epaphroditus heard that the church of Philippi heard about how he had gotten sick because of he was trying to fill the gap, he was heavy in heart because he was distressed because they were distressed because they heard he was sick. Now let me ask you this. How many of you get sick because you are worried because another member was sick. Now this is a an honored servant. Does it distress you and I when another church member is sick? It should. It should. Hello. And so here, uh, the Epaphroditus, he he was heavy hearted because. He was distressed because he had heard that the church heard about it and he was worried. He was concerned that his sickness had troubled the church. See, he wasn't concerned about, he, he wasn't concerned that Philippi had heard he was sick. It, it, it concerned him that they were worried about him. You ever tried to maybe minister to someone or you heard that was sick or you tried to do something for someone and they wound up blessing you instead of you blessing them? You ever had that happen? Yeah. Well, that was Epaphroditus. That, that's the kind of guy he was. And so uh, he he he... He was committed to the church at Philippi. Secondly, Epaphroditus was committed to the ministry of the Philippians to Paul. Verse 27. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Of course, verse 30. Because for the work of Christ, he was nigh to death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service towards me. So listen, he was committed to the ministry of Philippi. So like I said, evidently there was a need there that Paul had that maybe the church didn't know of or Maybe they just couldn't supply that need, and so Epaphroditus do what, did what was necessary to make up that gap. He was committed to the ministry of the Church of Philippi. You know, if as a whole, if every single church member of every single church was committed to that church, the ministry of that church, wouldn't it be something to 
for someone to say, I just don't have a place to serve because everybody's committed to the church. What a predicament that would be. But I don't know if a church has ever had that happen. Because we all have our own selfish needs a lot of times that we put in front of other things, don't we? And so, Epaphroditus, he was committed to the ministry. Now, I know people who've been committed to the ministry. That was their whole life. Was the ministry. It was raising their kids in the ministry. They took their kids soul winning. They took their kids there. They took, you know, they, they made sure their family was a part of the ministry. Epaphroditus almost died in his service. But it says here in 27 that he, even, he was nine or that he got sick because he was working himself to death for trying to minister to Paul, but God had mercy. God healed him. And it said that, uh, Paul said, listen, God, God had mercy on him, but not only I, because, listen, if he would have died, ministering to me and, uh, as a servant of Jesus, what kind of sorrow would that bring upon a person? And so Paul, he, goes, he, he had mercy on him, but he also had mercy on me. See, Paul commended Epaphroditus because of his service. I know folks out there say, well, I'm never going to lift up anybody's name above anybody else because, bless God, they're, they're not, they've never served to the, to the point that Jesus served. We understand that Jesus is the standard. But folks, listen, when, as he says they're a man of reputation, He's an honored servant. Shouldn't we give honor where honors due? And so, listen, uh, Paul gave honor to several men, did he not? He also gave dishonor to those who left the ministry for selfish or in worldly reasons. But uh, listen, Epaphroditus, man, he's a he's an honored servant, and Paul tells tells him, uh, listen. Uh, and listen, I sent him therefore the more carefully that when ye see him again, ye may rejoice and that I may uh, be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation. Then you, listen, I'm sending you a guy who's back. I'm sending uh, Epaphroditus back that, listen, you need to receive you need to give him some honor because he is a servant of the Lord. And when, he, and when Paul says he is a servant, that means something coming from Paul. Because, listen, it, it, Paul, one of the greatest, the greatest evangelists that ever lived and the, one of the greatest servants to ever live, as he says, I'm a debtor to everybody. I Many, I owe the gospel to every single person. That's the way he viewed himself. If for Paul to say this about Epaphroditus, listen, the church of Philippi should be able to receive him in gladness and love. And so Paul tells the church, I'm sending you back your member, minister, and messenger with this letter. He used to be honored. See, Epaphroditus is commendable and is to be honored for his service. The church is to honor those who are committed to her. Hello? The church is to honor those who are committed to her. The church and her servants are to have the type of relationship that Epaphroditus and the church at Philippi had. Folks, let's look at ourselves. Let's look in the mirror of God's word here. Do we have the kind of relationship with us, with the rest of the Garth Road Baptist Church? Let's just 
put it where the rubber meets the road. Does Miss Vicky have the relationship with the Garth Road Baptist Church that the church of Philippi had with Epaphroditus? If Miss Vicky gets sick, maybe unto death, would we be worried about Miss Vicky as the, as the church of Philippi was to Epaphroditus? I would hope so. You see, Epaphroditus was committed to the church at Philippi. So much so that he was willing to give his life in his service. Because when he's serving Paul, he's serving the church. If he's serving the church, who's he serving? Jesus. Epaphroditus was willing to go all the way in his service. For his service of the church. This is why I say we don't pay, play the church dating game. We don't leave for some sissy excuse. We don't leave the church because the pastor or whatever changed the color of the chairs. We don't leave the church because, well, the pastor didn't ask me to help do this or to do that. We don't leave the church because we think the pastor said something that he really didn't say. That he's never said. We don't leave. Listen, if you're that away, let me help you out. You're not, you're not much service to the church anyway, if that is your attitude. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be hurtful. I'm simply saying, are you committed to your church? Epaphroditus was. Timothy was a serve like Timothy. We talked about that. Do you does the does, do you have the relationship with your church, the Garth Road Baptist Church? Do we have a relationship with one another the way Epaphroditus and the church of Philippi had? They the church, they are to love one another with the love that Christ loves his church, right? That's the way we're to love one another, right? Well, we're not going to love one another the way Christ loved us if we don't have that kind of relationship. Too often, servants like Epaphroditus are taken advantage of and truly never appreciated. There's a lot of servants out there that they don't even want the recognition, and I, I, and I get that. There's a lot of folks out there that don't want the recognition when they are that way. But they need the, those servants need to be honored. Church love and honor your Epaphroditus's. Because they are willing to give it all, which includes their life, for the church. Epaphroditus was willing to give his life for the ser his service to the Lord. We talked about this Wednesday night, didn't we not? About Brother Stephen. His family's in the United States now, so I can mention his name. You see, we always talk, we always think about someone giving his life for the, uh, being a, a being a martyr was in the middle of preaching or going out and knocking doors or doing the ministry, you know, in the middle of a village or something. And somebody killing you that away, or you're out doing something. No, yes, he was in the ministry, but he was just driving down the street in his car. He. he his ministry cost him his life in Baghdad. What does our ministry cost us? Epaphroditus' ministry was about to cost him his life. But God had mercy on him and healed him of whatever sickness the Bible doesn't say. I'm not going to go into him. It wasn't COVID. Because, listen, China hadn't been creating that yet. But no, he was sick. He was, his ministry, 
his ministry to Paul through that church, it was about to cost him his life. What does ministry cost us? Some of us aren't even willing to give the 10%. That's commanded. A servant of honor is what Epaphroditus was. As Paul commends him in his service, may we treat those that are an Epaphroditus, may we treat as Paul did and give honor to them. Why? Because they love their church. They are committed to their church. They are willing to, if it cost it cost them everything for the ministry for their they're willing to pay whatever is necessary for the ministry how are you doing how are you in relation to epaphroditus i would say this every single one of us need to repent because we are all selfish me including. I've been I have my selfish moments just like anybody else. And when those times happen, I need to repent and I need to get back to doing what I was doing. Men and ministering. Folks, there's a lot of the reasons why we allow things to get in our way to our ministry. The worst one is sin, right? We allow sin to get into the camp. Whether it's the family, or if you're not, if you're not married, whatever it is, sin sin's the number one culprit. I want to give you some help here, how to keep sin from keeping you from ministry. It's easier to stay away from sin than it is to resist the temptation. It's easier. You know what your you know what your where your weaknesses are. I know where my weaknesses are. It is easier to be busy about the master's business than it is to resist the temptation. So if you have a whatever problem with your sin is. Whatever it is that you are struggling with, it's easier just to avoid it altogether by doing something different than to resist the temptation when it comes. Because once you're tempted, listen, temptation don't come until you have already here. When it's come here and here, it's all temptation's already there. Once you see it coming, once you see it, you've done it before. Maybe you've done it millions and hundreds of thousands or even millions of times. You know what's on the other side. It's just best to avoid it altogether than to try to resist it when you're face to face. What is ministry? What are we willing to pay for? What are we willing to give up? What will our ministry cost us? 10% is just the base, right? That's the bare minimum that we're commanded by God to give. What else are we willing to give? Father, as we conclude tonight, Lord, uh, or you know I, didn't want, I don't want to sound mean, hateful, unloving, Father, but uh, I do want to get the point across or that Epaphroditus or if we could all model our ministry off of him or that would be a good model we know Jesus is the example but none of us can live up to Jesus' standard how he meant how of him being the example or but Paul gives us uh, his own example or he gives us Timothy's example and now he gives us Epaphroditus Lord, out of all these human examples that we, that Paul has given us, 
to serve. May we take each of these examples and look in the mirror of your word and we're find out where we're lacking. Lord, in that we can correct them. Lord, I don't know every single person's weakness. Lord, I, Lord, I know where some of them are because I, I know everyone here. Lord, I know we all struggle, including myself, in giving everything, giving 100%. In service to you. I ask that you'd help us. That we would repent from. Not giving everything that we should. Lord and we would. Get right. and Move forward Lord with. Our service to you. Father I ask that you'd have your will and your way in the invitation. Father, I ask you to do all these things in Christ's name. Amen.